everyone welcome back to my channel i am ria in today's video we're going to be going over a topic that will help people who are trying to kickstart their real estate career in alabama for 2024 um so let's dive in we're not gonna waste any time so first things first we're gonna have to talk about the pre-requirements before you can even think about becoming a real estate agent you need to be 19 years old you need to have a high school diploma or equivalent you need to be a u.s citizen or a legal alien those three things need to be checked off before you can even move any further. So once you have all of that taken care of, you the pre-requirements are all checked off, now we can get into the education. So um, in order to be, get your real estate license in Alabama, you have to have 60 hours worth of real estate courses, state approved real estate courses. You have to also test out of that course and you have to pass with, I think it's an 80% or above. The real estate courses is going to cover a lot of material. Most of this material will not be on the state exam. However, it will cover real estate law, property law, um, contracts, um, real estate principles, fiduciary duties, all of that and above. Once you've completed the education portion and you've tested out and passed, then you prepare for your exam. Um, you have to, I know you just had an exam, but now you have to do the state exam. So the state wants to know, are you ready? to be a real estate agent. Do you know this information? Um, with the state exam, there's a national portion, there's a state portion. On the test, you have to pass both. It's not you pass one and you could take the other one again. It's either all or nothing. But before you take the state exam, I strongly, strongly suggest you do some exam preparation. You do have time before you take you do have time before you have to take the state exam. So I strongly, strongly suggest that you do some exam prep. Um, I will list two channels in the description box and the I maybe that helped me pass it the second time. If you follow what they're saying and, you know, watch the videos through and through, I watched them so many times I was able to recite it with, as the video was playing. That's how many times that I watched it. And this, I ended up passing it the second time only because I followed those two channels. The first time I kind of went off of Kaplan, um, the Kaplan courses, and then I went off of the book that I have. I'll put a picture here, um, which it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough information, and unfortunately, it had me all over the place. So with these two channels, they really touch on the topics that the state exam touches on. The national portion covers a huge portion of the test, so you, you definitely need to know it. We interrupt your program for a special message. Hey there, lovely viewers. It's Sasha, your virtual BFF on the I Am Rhea channel, popping in to welcome all our amazing new subscribers and send a big shout out to our loyal BFFs, the OG subscribers, you guys are the best. Now, for all you non-subscribers out there, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button to join the BFF squad, and let's make this family even bigger, and don't forget to like, comment, and share the love. Your support means the world to us, and together, we're making this channel even more awesome. Now, back to your scheduled programming. So after you do this exam prep, you need to register for the exam through PSI. That's what Alabama uses. Um, whoever you have done your course with, your real estate um, prerequisite course, they should give you the information on how to register through PSI. PS, with PSI, you're gonna have to need a valid form of ID. And if there's any other required documentation that you need, it, they should give that information to you as you're registering. If they don't, be sure to ask because you don't want to be turned around and have to reschedule. And I don't know if you have to re... I think you can reschedule once or twice before they make you pay again. Because I, th I think I had to reschedule one time and I didn't pay it. But then I tried to reschedule it again and then I had to pay it. So I think you only get one time to reschedule. So use your time wisely. If you have them on the phone as you're registering, ask them, is there anything that I need to bring um, besides a valid ID. So at this point, once you have, once you get get there to take the test, they will let you know if you passed or failed before you leave. And how they do it is um, you let them know that you're finished and um, they print out your results right there. And if you pass, I, if I can remember correctly, there's a few things you have to sign. If you fail, it's like they just kind of give you the paper and they, they kind of look off because they know that you failed type of thing. But so I kept both of my little papers and if you fail, you will basically get a sheet that looks like this and it will have the max score that you could get on the content area and then your score that you got on the content area. So if you pass, 
you don't get that. You don't get um, like a, a guide on how you passed or what you failed on. You get the information on what you need to do to get your temporary sales license. And it tells you exactly what you need to do. But on the other part that I folded down that you can't see, it tells you your score. Um, I'll go ahead and say, because I don't mind. The first time I took it, I failed. I made a 63. You have to make a 70 and above. Yes, you have to pass with a 70%. I failed because I made a 63. Um, apparently, I did very badly on the state portion, contracts, the principles of the agency, and property ownership. So it let me know what I needed to kind of gear my studying towards. Um, the second time, however, I passed with a 74. So it was almost a, a it was an 11 point difference. So it, I, it made a difference. So if you pass, you have to submit your license application to the Alabama Real Estate Commission website, or I think you, you could definitely go in. Of course, you have to pay the required fees. So the required fees, I'm going to tell you what they are, or what they were, they could have increased for 2024. But if you want your license to be active, it's $210. That's $150 for the license fee, $30 for the research and education fee, $30 for the recovery fund, which you, were, you will um, be informed about that through your real estate course. And if you want to go inactive, it's $180. So you still pay the the license fee and the research and education fee, but not the re recovery fund. So the recovery fund that will be paid once you activate your license. With the license application, um, with all, with those fees that you're paying and the application that you fill out, you also have to complete your background check and you also have to do the um, fingerprinting. They recommend that you do the application very close to the day that you do the background check because if it doesn't all come back around the same time within close proximity, you will have to redo the background check again. Like they want it all together for some reason. I don't know the reason why, but that's just what I was told. So after you've submitted your application, okay, well, after you have took your license, pre-license course, tested out, took the state exam, submitted your application, did your background check, did your fingerprint, now it's the waiting game. This could take, it could take the Real Estate Commission a couple of weeks to review your application and approve it, considering if there's an influx of applications already, or if holidays are, are, are um, if there's a holiday or not, it could take a little time. So within that time, I would do your research on the brokerages that you're thinking about joining. If you haven't already chose one, I strongly, strongly suggest that you research and interview with these brokerages and not only interview with the broker but also talk to the real estate agents as well um to see how they like it um what are their viewpoints in regards to the brokerage that they're with is there anything that they don't like about the brokerage what are things that they do like about the brokerage um is this the first brokerage they signed with, or did they move over to this brokerage? Are they planning on moving from this brokerage? These are definitely questions that I wish I would have asked someone when I first chose my first brokerage. Um, there's a lot of more other things that you should ask too, but we can save that for another time, another chit chat. So once your application is approved, you will receive your official real estate license. So at that moment, you should definitely celebrate. That is a means for celebration because it definitely takes a lot to become a licensed realtor. It's not a walk in the park. It's very stressful The getting as far as the course wise because at that time when I did it, it was during COVID. So everything was online and it's so much information and it can just get so boring. And then for people like me, if you're if you get bored, you get you don't get interested in it. Um, you lose interest. So it took a lot. It took a lot, and I just really had to buckle down and just decide like if I want to do this or not. So there you have it. That's the complete guide on how you obtain your real estate license in Alabama in 2024. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more valuable content. Hit that notification bell so that you can stay updated. 
and best luck to all of you on your real estate journey. I will see you guys in the next video.